fuck. Buttery. Oh man. Good everyone, so on this video I'm going to tear this engine block completely down, we'll pull the crank out, pull the pistons out, we'll dismantle it as much as we can and see what makes these things go and how they operate and uh, hopefully this can give you a bit more insight if you're doing the same thing, pulling something apart or maybe you're trying to reassemble something, this video might give you a good indication of where things go and how it's all put together. Now this is part of a series of videos, I have been rebuilding an engine in my own way uh, for my own car. Now that I've been over cylinder heads and uh, basically I turned two and a half engines into one good engine uh, and this is the bad bottom end. I did end up buying a different bottom end, putting a different cylinder head on that bottom end and put it in the car and we're all good to go. So this block had low compression, it had a whole bunch of other gremlins with it as well which I'll show you. The cylinder head was no good which I've just cut up and done an anatomy video on the cylinder head. Now we can get stuck into this engine block and start ripping it apart, seeing seeing what's going on on the inside. Now once it's fully torn apart, I'm gonna give honing a practice. I've never done it before and this is a good engine to practice on. Right, I'll just show you the balls really quick. So this is cylinder two, that's got low compression because of the piston rings. The cylinder walls are okay. These cylinder walls are pretty rough. Uh, and as you can see, this piston has copped the tip of a glow plug. Anyway, we'll see how we can go getting this scratch out. But before we get there, we've got to pull the rest of this block apart. Now at a glance, we can see this is all our oil galleries. This is where the oil pump lives. And this is where the water pump lives. So that's where all the water gets cycled through the engine. And then in here is our timing gears and things of that nature. So we'll pull these balance shafts out. Now these are just here to balance the harmonics that come along with a four cylinder engine. Uh, that's why they're called balance shafts. And they just eliminate any kind of resonant frequencies or damaging vibrations. So now we can flip the engine over, knock the pistons out and then take the crank out. Alright, I've just removed all the bolts out of this backing plate which houses the rear main seal. So I should be able to knock that loose and get that last cap off. Alright, just note as we pull this cap off, there's a thrust washer here. And that just houses in here. One on the other side as well. Whereas you don't see that on these other caps. So now the crank is ready to pull out, which will be a heavy son of a bitch. Now we can see our oil squirters. They squirt oil on the bottom of the piston. Uh, that's a really good thing to have in an engine. Not all engines do, but the well-built Toyota engines. And I'm sure there's more out there. I only know of the Toyotas. Uh, they've got them, which is what makes them reliable among other things. Now another thing to note is the other halves of the thrust washers are still in the block. Alright, last thing left to undo is this oil filter housing and oil cooler. I'm not sure of its specific name.
All right, so this is in the way of that last bolt there. Um, have fun getting that out without damaging it, I think. Might have to replace that. All right, that's pretty cool. As we can see, that's all coolant galleries. And these are oil galleries, so the oil will come th through through the back here, through the filter, and then back out. But it passes through what looks like a cooling kind of mechanism. So coolant will circulate around that and potentially pull heat out of the oil as it moves around the engine. All right, so we've got the bearings here for each piston. Now a little bit of wear on these edges is normal. That's just the nature of how engines work. Those are pretty reasonable as far as bearings go, considering the history of this engine. Now this bearing here is a little more concerning. You can see there's a bit of a polishing effect happening here. Now that is a bit more wear than you would like to see. That is an indication of the bearing rubbing against the crank. So that's not exactly what you want. You want a thin layer of oil for the bearings to glide on. So the fact that that wear is there would indicate that that's the oiling is not happening and this engine is on its way out. The rest of them are pretty much the same as piston number one, except for that one particular bad one. Now the crank, uh, that looks pretty healthy. No nasty scoring on there or burn marks or anything like that. We didn't spin any bearings, so we shouldn't expect any of that. This would be pretty good to reuse, except for the fact that these keyway, well, this keyway in particular came loose and it was chattering around inside the main pulley. The gear was fine. It was the pulley that was the issue. So I did JB weld, weld that in to get me out of a pinch, but yeah, not ideal. If the crank's out, you would repair that. But credit to JB Weld, it, it did hold up. All right, now obviously I was a bit careless with how this all came apart because I'm not putting it back together. But now we're up to the part where we can practice honing. So I'll get the hone out, I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, and then we we're gonna aim for 45 degree cross hatching, see if we could screw up these cylinder walls. Uh, and then we're gonna give it a quick wash out afterwards with soapy water. All right, as you can see, that's the kind of cross hatching we're going for compared with one that we haven't touched. You can see how these look a lot more polished. Whereas this has got that nice cross hatching. All right, let's take a real good look at this one, see all the dimples and scratches and things in it. We'll see how much of that we can get out. All right, so I've done this second one and you can still see that big scratch mark there and some scoring at the very top. We've got a good cross hatch, but it hasn't really gotten rid of those nasty imperfections. I mean, there's a reason after all that I didn't use this block in the car anyway, but it's a good test for the tool we're using. Scratches aside, we can see these marks on the cylinder wall here. I'm gonna give this a go and see if I can get rid of them. All right, so this is the result after a couple of minutes. Now we've gotten rid of those marks that we were looking at earlier, but as is the common theme, there's still a fair few imperfections left behind. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Uh, these things, they do have their place in the garage. Don't expect amazing results like what you would get from a machine shop. This will definitely restore the cross hatching to your cylinder block. It may not remove the imperfections, but in some cases that might be all right. Uh, your engine will still work. It won't be 100% perfect, but you'll definitely have good oiling. Uh, and for some cases, that might be all you need to get yourself out of trouble. Now, these things can be dangerous. If you lift them too high while they're spinning, they'll spring out and I got my shirt tangled up in this and then it came around and whipped me in the stomach. So I got a bit of a mark there, but uh, learn from my mistakes, keep that in mind uh, and just go easy with this stuff. 
And I hope you've also learned a lot about how these engines go together by watching me pull it apart. Thanks for watching, I hope you guys enjoyed this as always. If you did, subscribe, stick around, there'll be more videos like this. And uh, yeah, give us a thumbs up if you liked it and we'll see you on the next one.